So we're now going to talk about the structure and functionality of the Zippy Quotes client, which of course is what sends the connection requests and messages asynchronously with the server. And this has two main parts. It has a client beans class that this does all the heavy lifting of getting things connected by creating an R socket requester that's connected to the server. And in order to do this, we have to make a bunch of calls. And before I gave you a kind of a high level overview, now we're going to talk in more detail about how this actually works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call the builder method on the R socket requester, which is a static factor method that makes us a builder that we can use to build the rest of the requester. We're then going to set the MIME type for the data. In this case, we're going to use application concise binary object representation or CBOR. And then we're going to go ahead and set up the strategies that correspond to that MIME type, which are going to be the Jackson CBOR encoder and decoder, which is how we encode the messages in binary. And then we're also going to set up something called the simple authentication encoder. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute too. That's basically what's used to do just a simple password and login name uh, authentication mechanism. We then go ahead and use the R socket connector fluent method in order to set up the connector strategies. As you can see, the connector strategies have two parts to them. They have a reconnect strategy. And what we do here is we say, if we can't establish a connection or connection is dropped, then try twice waiting with a delay of two seconds for each try or each retry. And the other thing we do is we go ahead and we set up an acceptor to handle connection requests coming back in from the server. So remember we talked about the, the handshake and the acknowledgement that takes place between the client and the server through the connect mapping. So when the client connects to the server, the server is going to turn around and send a message back to the client. And that's going to be handled through this thing called a connect response handler. And we'll take a closer look at that in a bit. But that has to be used kind of as a server. So the client now has become a server for response messages back from the server. We then go ahead and start setting up how we're going to contact that handle connect endpoint, the connect endpoint that we have in the server. And to do that, we're going to set up the route which is going to talk to the server connect endpoint, which is the handle connect method. And we're then going to go ahead and set up the metadata credentials, which will include the username and password and the MIME type for all this stuff. So this is the simple my email address and you shall not pass, which is not my password ever, but uh, just what I'm using here for this example. And then I go ahead and set up the data payload. And this is just going to say what the name of the client is for the purposes of registering this information on the back end in the server. It's just going to be a, a random UUID sent as a string. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle in this chain is we have to connect to the server to obtain a mono to the R socket requester. So we've got it connected to local host at port 7000. We could use other ports too if we wanted to. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the proxy side. This is the proxy that we write because there's really no, there's nothing that comes out of the box that'll do it justice. And the methods in the proxy demonstrate each of the four interaction models that are supported by our socket. So request response, channel, fire and forget, and request stream. Uh, for this short walkthrough, I'll just talk about a couple of them. The code has all of them. So after the socket requester is created, then the messages can start to flow. And the way we create this is we auto wire the uh, M zippy quote requester with the mono to the R socket requester through the client beam we saw, and we put that in the zippy proxy class as a field. And then here are a couple of methods that are proxy methods. This is the subscribe proxy method. This is used to create and send a subscription message to the server, and then it gives us back a subscription that's confirmed by the server. And so what we do is we call subscribe, we give it the UUID, which is just a unique label for the subscription. And then we go ahead and we call the route method with the subscribe parameter saying, hey, please go send this to the subscribe endpoint. And then we give it the data, which is the subscription that holds the, the UUID that we passed in as a parameter. So that's the data. So we have the message, subscribe is going to the subscribe endpoint with the subscription data. And then we go ahead and we call retrieve mono saying, please send this over and get a response back as a subscription. We send a subscription, it comes back and it's got confirmed set and that says we're ready to go. Notice how we use a couple of 
project reactor operators like MAP and FlatMap on monos to, to do this, uh, to get things up and running. And then we also use a very cool method or an operator called cache, which turns this mono into a hot source. And that means anytime we ask for the same mono for that type, we'll get back the same result. So it won't make another call. Another method I'm going to take a quick look at is called get random quotes. This is another proxy method that returns a flux that emits random zippy quotes. And this is really interesting. So it takes a parameter, which is a mono to an integer array that contains random quote IDs within the range. And then it uses the zip with method to combine the result from the zippy quote requester, which is how we talk to the server, with the mono to the random indices. And it'll take both of those things and turn it into something called a tuple two. And then it uses the tuple two to get the requester, which is the first item in the tuple two. And it uses the requester to set up a route to the get quotes method. And then it makes the data be the array contents, the, those random indices as a flux. So that's what's being sent over. So we're sending a flux over, which is a channel example. And then we get back from that a flux. So we send a flux and we get back a flux. And the flux we sent over was the, the random integers. And the flux we get back, of course, will be the zippy quotes. The flat map many call takes a mono and has it return a flux. So that's how we can get a flux back from this whole thing. So that's kind of a walkthrough of the structure of some of the client API mechanisms.